Have you ever thought about the power of social media? Social media has the power to make your business grow. Grow! Yeah. Why don't you let us manage your social media? Because our business is to see your business grow. Visit us at www.beastownmedia.co.za Construction Industry Conversations is brought to you by the Association of Construction Project Managers. Your host, Nambula Rakolote. Welcome to the third episode of the Construction Industry Conversations brought to you by the ACPM, which is the Association of Construction Project Managers. The episode today is somewhat different from the previous ones because I have a co-host today and I would like to introduce my co-host, Mr. Anthony Afodofe, who is the president of the ACPM. Thank you very much, Nambula. Thank you very much, Anthony. He is a project construction manager and also he is a full member of the ACPM, which is Association of Construction Project Managers. We are talking about the ACPM Excellence Awards, Underline Excellence. And today, myself as the host, Nomvula Rakulote, and my co-host, Mr. Anthony Afodofe, the president of the ACPM, have the pleasure of hosting Mr. Nick Brown, Operations Director at GHC Africa Project Managers, which is one of the corporate members of the ACPM and of course our international award winner. Nick, welcome. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. Nick Brown is a professional construction project manager and also he is a full member of the ACPM. Today, we are just going to have exciting times where we are going to learn about the ins and outs of this building that we see as finished products, but not even having a clue as what it takes. But before we go to that, can I hand over to my co-host, Anthony Afodofe, just to give us a brief overview of the Excellence Awards, ACPM Excellence Award, what it seeks to achieve, and really, what is the criteria? Over to you, Anthony. Thank you very much, Namvula. Nick, I hope you're ready, yeah, but I think uh, I'll set the standards up uh, before we start. Just give me an opportunity. There's a lot of detail I need to go through here, so I'll refer to my notes as we go along. Not a problem. Um, the ACPM established the Excellence Award as part of recognizing corporate members under their registry. Um, so we normally look at the previous year of projects completed and use uh, uh, those projects for the Excellence Awards. So corporate members have the privilege of submitting applications for the projects they completed a year prior to, to uh, actually the evaluation of the projects. So this specific period for this uh, awards was from the 1st of July 2016 to July 2018. That's the period we gave because uh, in 2017, we did not have a excellence award. So we gave the benefit to the corporate members and we gave them two years to be able then to review the completed projects. What is excellence as we speak about in our industry? We always talk about excellence. What is the excellence? We define the excellence as showing distinction distinction beyond the norm of being superior in the projects that we've executed, of being superlative of the projects that were uh, executed. In this characteristics that we aim to recognize and showcase a reward for those who have actually tried to exemplify these words that we are using. So in essence, that is what we are looking at today. And fortunately, GHC Africa was one of the winners uh, that we're going to interview today. The consideration for the awards is looking at the impact on the environment, social investment, 
innovation within the projects, the sustainability of the actual project when finished, and also benchmarking a standard of excellence within the industry as compared to the competition that is around. So in essence, that is the background of the Excellence Awards. Thank you very much, Anthony. Uh, quite detailed. I'm sure those that are corporate members that would enter, you did just get a detail of the project. And of course, the underlying word is excellence. Obviously, as you can see with the pictures here that are depicted of the one and only international award winner of the ACPM Excellence Awards. Let us get to you now, Nick. Nick, can you just give us an overview about GHC Africa Project Managers as, as an organization? And I do understand that you've got also associate officers operating in Cape Town, Durban, Lusaka, Maputo, Accra, Lagos, and so on. Can you just give us a brief overview about the organization that is doing such excellent work, not only within South Africa, but within Africa as sure. well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, GHC Africa, um, as a company, was formed by Neil Graham some 27 years ago um, as a project management company. We um, essentially operated both in Africa as well as um, South Africa. Um, we, we, we now operate essentially into Africa as GAC Africa depicts, um, but we also have a sister company, Origin PM, which operates in, uh, in um, South Africa. We are extremely passionate about what we do. We make sure we employ people that are passionate about what they do, people who thrive on challenges. We also, we also pride ourselves in being able to um, challenge the industry norms. And we collaborate with, with our team members. We, we recognize very clearly that we are part of a group of experts whereby we need to collaborate to, in order to, to, to successfully deliver a project. We listen far more intently and we collaborate closely. Um, for, uh, foremost, we enjoy what we do and we try and foster long-term relationships with our clients. As you say, we are, we are all through Africa at the moment and uh, we've got a lot of um, work ongoing into Africa which would then obviously bring its own opportunities. Well, that's, that's, that's quite excellent. So you are saying that this is a go-to organization when it comes to issues of project management because I surely 27 years is a long time. Well, it is, yes. And uh, what I said, I think it's about the people we employ and the mm. attitude we have towards construction um, and project management as a whole and obviously how we interact with our clients. Uh, we certainly bring... Um, a different dimension to to a project. We we are certainly not um, pen pushing project managers. We get ourselves involved in the project. We become part of that process, and we hopefully add value with 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 our people as well as what we offer for the client. Excellent. And can you then just share with us your own professional expertise, of course, and your specific role <clears throat> in the project that won the Excellence Award, the EcoBank uh, Ghana. Sure. I studied as a civil engineer. Um, I uh, finished in 1985 and worked for a civil engineering company, a large construction company for the next five years, but uh, soon realized that that wasn't really where my passion lay. Mm -hmm. I preferred building construction, so I joined a very well-known um, local um, construction company in 1988 and worked for them for 19 years. Effectively, and I did this the other day when I was looking through updating my CV for some of the RFPs that we were putting in, um, I've built over 25 um, offices, um, complexes in Santon, um, probably more than 250 residential units, uh, hospitals, uh, retail centers, and leisure. Um, our, staff, uh, our staff itself... Um, have a great deal of experience as well. But uh, added to, to that experience, I met uh, Neil Graham in 2004 when he was uh, project managing um, Santon City, one of their very first upgrades. And we had a discussion about project management and I was inquiring. And he said, listen, if you want to change this, you need, give me a call. So effectively, I, I phoned him uh, two years later and said, listen, I've had enough. I need, a, I need a change of scenery. I want a different challenge. And he says, well, uh, come and join us. And in 2006, I joined Neil and, uh, and Evo at the time and a chap called Mike Woodroff. They were the directors at the time and uh, I joined them as their fourth director. Effectively, I did a project or two in, uh, in South Africa. 
We then were given the opportunity to do a project in Zambia, which is uh, Levy Business Park, mm -hmm. multi-use project, um, hotel, office, and a very large construction uh, retail center, sorry. And um, obviously from that, uh, we developed a reputation and we developed the skills of working in Africa. And it does require a certain skill to work in Africa. It's, it, it requires a certain temperament. Um, to work into Africa and you need to accept that you're going to have these challenges. Mm -hmm. uh, so we then moved uh, on to Ghana, where I've spent the last eight years in Ghana. Uh, we've delivered some of their first uh, shopping centers. Uh, I've just finished uh, project managing the new airport, their Terminal 3 airport. Uh, we, as a company, have got uh, two high rises that we've just finished and obviously the Echo Bank project that we, we're referring to now. And I think just to the second part of your question is, is what role did I play on the Echo Bank project? Uh, if initially, we were appointed as the principal agent, traditional role as principal agent and project okay. manager. However, uh, at the beginning of the project, we, we, we spoke to the client and we said to them, please, we, we would like to get involved in developing the project brief because this is where a lot of things happen and a lot of the yeah. planning can take place. So we said, let's get involved in this project brief so we could try and influence the, um, the process going forward and we can try and avoid any abortive costs, which is exactly what we did. Um, however, as we started the project, we soon realized that um, – the development manager, as well as the contractor, mm -hmm. um, didn't have the requisite skills to perform those roles. And we, we really, one of our um, innov innovations was to move across to a development manager and also get highly involved in the construction process, um, which is exactly what we did. Wow. Thank you, Nick. Um, you know, still passionate, of course, ja. and sharing with us all of those successes with GAC Africa. So if you've joined in 2006, it's like 13 solid years of all of those achievements. Without gray hairs, yeah. Without gray hair. <laughs> yeah. I think that goes, um, that is the sherry on top. Okay, thank you very much about that. And I'm just thinking, before we even get to see what are the considerations, what made them to be the international award winner, after the break, Anthony Afodofe will then further engage with you on the specifics, yeah. highlights, challenges, and what exactly the ACPM looked at in terms of judging um, sure. the project at hand. Thank so you. after the break, we will then go into those details. Yes, yes. Guess who got brands talking? Brandlife.co.za. Welcome back, and we continue. Now we are going to go into the nitty gritties coming to this Excellence Awards. And I give over to my co-host, Anthony Afodofe. Can you just then take us through the process? Thank you very much. Um, we need to understand what it takes uh, to actually be eligible to participate in the Excellence Awards. So I'll run quickly with five points. Uh, that explains the whole position. Number one is the project, obviously, that were completed should have been done, one, in the sub-Saharan area, in Africa, and also offshore. The second point being that the client should have realized that the, the project needs exceptional excellence in its being. The third point is entries provided must be sufficient in terms of the scope of works linked to the SACPCMP ID of works uh, as deemed by our construction industry. And also we're looking at issues around green engineering practices, how that was implemented in the projects. We're also looking at health and safety applications within the project. We're also looking at innovation in terms of how the design innovations were established and also construction innovation as well looking at the social investments that were made within the duration of the project. Um, and finally, looking at value-adding characteristics that the team and the contractor brought together for the project to become a success. Hmm. And then finally, the project must have been completed successfully on time, within budget, and with the quality aspects that the client deemed fit. So Nick, 
Are you ready to tell us about yes, no pressure, eh? the details? <laughs> <laughs> We're talking no, exceptional no, no excellence, <laughs> Nick. <laughs> okay. Yes, I am. Thank All you. right. Great. I'll hand over to you, Numfula, again. Okay. Nick here, we're talking about exceptional excellence. <clears throat> Obviously, it's so easy for us to see the finished product, but we don't know what it takes. We are not there in the background. Can you just share with us, maybe to say what are the challenges, what are the lessons learned before we even go to unpacking uh, 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 the project itself so that when we, when we get to know and understand the, the project itself, Surely we would like to know, you know, what it actually takes. Well, the brief initially from Echo Bank, and we're talking about the Echo Bank yes. um, tower in, in Accra, Ghana. Um, Echo Bank first um, stipulation in terms of its design was to be iconic. Mm. It needed to be a landmark in their country. It needed to demonstrate their success as a banking firm, and it needed to be a benchmark for others to follow within, within that particular region and also internationally. Um, however, unique buildings are mm. exactly that. They are unique. So a lot of the stuff that you're doing is for the first time. Mm. Um, and it's, it's incredibly important to understand exactly what those unique features are in order to be able to put in um, contingency plans to try and um, mitigate those, those, those challenges. Yes. Um, some of the challenges, for example, in that particular building's design was the complexity of the facade. Mm -hmm. I think you just have to look at the um, facade itself and um, you can almost see that there are three or four elements to the facade it it itself. It's the framework that goes on to the structure, it's the glass itself, it was double glazed. It needed to be manufactured in uh, Serbia. It was a specialist glass. It had argon gas, uh, gas inside it. It then had various louvers, vertical posts, horizontal, and it also had a wrapped um, punched metal frame curtain around it. Now that itself lends itself to the challenges and everybody out there will be thinking, it's a facade I wouldn't like to try and control because that determines how the project runs. Anything yes. goes wrong with the facade, it obviously mm. impacts on the internal of that. Um, there was also specific requirements from the client, uh, Echo Bank, because it was purpose-made for their, for, for their uses. And they came up with a very um, stringent budget, extremely stringent budget, which we had to adhere to. But they also came up with a whole lot of um, wishes. For example, it needed to, um, to be uh, centralised. In other words, their satellite offices needed to move back into that particular building. Mm -hmm. They wanted a bullion handling system. Uh, they wanted a full data system that would control all of their satellite offices. They wanted auditoriums, uh, training rooms, um, banking halls separate so they could have customers. So quite a difficult project brief to marry with this complex facade and obviously it required a little bit of innovative thinking. Yes. I think the most important thing was that such a project had never been done uh, in Ghana before. Um, so there was a lot of firsts on this building and especially in the tight time frames. Ghana um, was known, um, or is known, and hopefully we're changing that perception, is that time is not really the most important mm -hmm. criteria. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow's another day. And we had to obviously bring that sort of culture into, into that environment and, and, and strike a balance between the quality and the, um, the deliverables. And as there was uh, a lot of firsts, mm. I'd like to just mention some of those firsts. Mm. It, was the largest ex it had the largest expanse of glass facade on the outside particularly for, for Ghana. It, uh, it was double glazed, as I mentioned earlier. It had this punched plate uh, wrapped around the building, which could only come right at the very end, and it had um, the largest map of Africa printed on it. Yeah. Uh, it had a 200, the shape of it, as you can see, is almost elliptical in the, 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 the banking hall alongside it. It was also got that round shape. Now, that round shape itself lends itself to complexities. And um, you can realise how difficult that would be to try and deliver an efficient building within that particular shape. So it, its orientation on the site was 260 degrees. So you could see 260 degrees of that building from the front, um, from the front elevation. The other thing is it, uh, and you mentioned it earlier, it needed to be highly energy efficient. Mm -hmm. How could we do that with a full glass facade in a tropical environment? So that was where it started to lend itself um, to innovative thinking, to certain sort of challenges. Um, one of the other challenges was the, was the culture of construction in, in, in Ghana itself. The Ghanaians are, are, are very calm, very quiet, and the way we manage our, our sites is very different, or the way we have to manage our sites mm. is extremely different in, in Ghana. So we had to make sure that the teams that 
we appointed had both the character traits and the expertise and the skill to work in this environment um, and obviously try and drive through these, these deliverables without being adverse, adversarial or um, getting into any conflict. And that was one of the first challenges that we, we experienced. Well, thank you very much. Uh, you know, to us, when we look at the building, it's just like it was not built. Somebody has just put it there, boom, and it was there. Mm. And you mentioning all of these complexities and so on uh, um, is quite eye-opening. But also, it means it's not just about building. You have to go beyond that. It's not only about your expertise. There's an issue of understanding. There's the cultural sure. barriers that you have to overcome, the community involvement and all of that. So I wouldn't even go further on that. Anthony, can you then? Can I then just go over yes. to you in terms of unpacking how they were able to meet um, the criteria that was set? Okay, thank you very much. Um, Nick, 1957, that was Ghana's independence. And today is the 6th of March, which actually marks celebration of our independence. Now that you're talking about working in Ghana, mm. let's get into the details of the EcoBank project. I believe you've also received some awards with this specific project. I'll mention two. It won the International Sapua Award and also the API Award for first prize for best office development. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, um, the design of it is innovative, it's iconic, uh, which was exactly what I said earlier. The brief set by the client was for an innovative, innovative uh, building, which is, which is what essentially SOPOA look at, but it's also whether it challenges the norms, whether it pushes the boundaries in terms of designs, whether its position, its location, and its, its, its impact on that particular environment in its setting is excellent or iconic, which it exactly is. It's, it's situated in an area where there are other banks located close by, mm. but this particular site is on a corner, it's on a main road, and it looks over the sea. Uh, this building now sits prominently in its position, and the design itself, uh, from an architectural point of view, um, is, is, is very, very clever. It, it takes positions of the sun. It looks at how sections could be um, shaded from the sun without distracting from its, uh, its elevation. It obviously had double glazing, for example, that would then um, cool it down to, to necessitate the, the use of curtains behind it. What you don't want at night is a, is a beautiful building that's shone up with the light. Mm -hmm. And then you've got curtains everywhere and it, it's cluttered and it looks clumsy. Yeah. So these were all taken into account when, when putting the initial design together by the, um, by the architects and obviously the, the consultants involved. Um, we had to we had to utilise the existing um, sewer water systems, which are effectively non-existent in certain areas of Ghana. We had to purify the water. We had to use um, sewer treatment plants. We had to make sure we had grey water that was sustainable. So all of these led to um, obviously Sapo and API um, looking at this building and realising it was a it was a an iconic um, project. Yeah. Thank you very much, Nick. Just to follow up on that. Um, if you look at the social investment part, let's, let's talk a little bit about that. Because any construction project has people involved, from professionals, contractors, labor, SMMEs, and the likes. Can you give us, within two minutes, what, how that happened, and what was that capital that was put towards those elements? Sure, I think, again, as I mentioned earlier, getting involved in the project brief is where we make that difference, where we plan it properly. Mm -hmm. And Echobank has a very specific criteria in terms of our social responsibilities. They have their own social responsibilities, which they met and managed throughout the project. But we then um, added some of our own innovations to try and enhance that process. Obviously, we, we, we have a, a duty of care to contribute and to, to leave that particular area and that particular site better off Yes. than when we, we, we found it, which yeah. we believe we did, and I'll, I'll give you some examples of that. Initially, uh, we, we insisted that they were joint venture partners with the consultants so that we could, uh, we could swap ideas, and uh, very often 
the ideas from the Ghanaians with their knowledge of the local was, was invaluable to how we put those designs together and how we implemented those designs. We certainly employed local companies and um, in Ghana, they, the, the skills are there. You've just got to give that little bit of extra time, give them a bit of a heads up mm. and they will deliver. Okay. Um, so we use these local industries, but knowing um, up front that this was what we needed to do, we could give them as much time as possible. Um, we created employment, obviously, throughout the construction process, mm -hmm. but we also created employment with um, permanent employment when the building was finished. For example, yeah. the cleaners, the yeah. security, and some of the um, gardening staff were taken on and they were employed um, in the building, and they are still employed in the building. Mm -hmm. The contractor was, uh, was, was obliged to do on-site training for bricklayers, plasterers, and painters, and he did that, and he introduced those guys back into, the, uh, into his construction process. We engaged with uh, informal traders. Uh, most sites, as you'll know, they, you get these informal traders that set up food stores and that, but in Ghana, that's what they do. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's an informal trading environment. Mm -hmm. So what we did is we, uh, we engaged with the, um, with the local traders, the local informal traders, and we created shelter. We created special areas for them to supply food, equipment, and, uh, and products. Mm. Nick, as I said, looking at these pictures, it's like you've just take that building and put it there. Mm. And I can hear the explanation different, uh, definitely. There's so much that has gone into it, and we can still see the passion. But can you just share with us, you know, the, the challenges? Let's get to understand what it really takes I know that you will not be able to go through all of them, but I am still interested in some of the challenges that have been experienced. Thank you. Um, as you say, it's, 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 it'll take too long to go through all the challenges because mm. they, were, they were daily challenges. But what I'll try and do is, is try and bring three of the major challenges that we, we encountered. I think the very first challenge was when, contrary to our recommendation, uh, Echo Bank uh, approved an appointment of a contractor which we didn't believe had both the experience, the management skill, all the EQ and the experience of working in Ghana, um, and also what exacerbated this, they allowed the, the, the main contractor to also tender for their subcontractors, the major subcontract packages, and we ultimately were advised by the client to appoint them. So in, in itself, that sets up a major challenge because so all of the risk is sitting in, in under one, one um, contractor. How we innovated and made sure that we mitigated this was we set up the initial meetings with these guys, um, we set up their suppliers, we set up meetings with their, with their um, selected subcontractors, but very quickly realised that they didn't have the skill to put together a detailed construction programme. And um, we have the skills in-house, myself um, being an engineer um, and a project manager, we had the skills to put in a detailed programme. So this is exactly what we did. We put a very detailed programme together, which then drove the information schedule and that. And we met with these guys and, and, and interrogated how they would do it. We realised that their methodology of doing the building was flawed. Um, they hadn't recognised any of the key choke points, um, in particular the, the facade. So what we said was, OK, fine, take our programme and break it down into daily production targets, and we want to see how you monitor that. Uh, weren't doing it very well, so we initiated a 15-minute discussion every single morning, mm -hmm. whereby the guys would then deal with their, their production targets for that day. This went well, but then the labourers themselves weren't... Um, aware of where they were going. They seemed to be working one isolation. They needed to be aware of the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. So we gave visual representation. So the guys could colour these little facade blocks in and it became a competition. And eventually these guys competed with each other and they, they, they knew where they were going as a, as, as a whole. Um, we got very, very involved in the design of the facade. We put in some contingency plans in our program. We visited the factories. We realised where the choke points were. We created extra storage areas. There's a lot that we were involved in. I think if we had tried to do a, a traditional um, role as a project manager, um, we would never have been able to do this. So we stepped into that construction management role. Um, the other issue was that the contractor had never been familiar with, um, with working with JBCC contract and unfortunately didn't respect any of the dates or, or, or time frames, arguing that it would be better to deliver a quality project than worry about time. And obviously that was one of our major challenges was to, to try and balance this. As I said, we'd, uh, we'd put in contingency plans within the program. Uh, okay. we, we allowed the building to be wrapped, for example, so they could carry on. They didn't like that. They really didn't like the wrapping, and we then employed an outside company to do that. But after a while, they realised that this was an important uh, um, uh, intervention that allowed them to finish. Uh, we also separated the glass designs. 
Um, the other one was that there were two major, the other challenge, there was two major scope changes that were made by the client. The one, um, they took all of their satellite offices and halfway through the project they decided they wanted to house them in this building. Now that was a major challenge and clearly that wasn't going to happen uh, within the time frames that we had and uh, we discussed this. But the second one was they um, wanted a data centre in their building as well, which then also added to this particular problem. Ultimately, uh, the time frame that the contract came back was a nine-month extension of time, legitimate extension of time. We interrogated, realised their project links were, were, were not logical and we, um, we then said, okay, fine, this is what we'll do, this is how you should do it, wrap the building, remove some of the elements, look at your loading platforms, keep the, the crane on that much longer. Now, this is stuff the contractor should be thinking of. So ultimately, we reduced that, uh, that uh, overrun from nine months down to less than six months, which suited the, 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 the client because he wouldn't have had to extend any of his leases. So we married what they wanted versus what the contractor was ultimately delivering. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nick. That was a mouthful. From the side of the Association of Construction Project Managers, I would like to congratulate you once again for winning the International Award for the Echo Bank Project. Thank you very much. We know that it wouldn't have been that easy under the extreme heat of wearing helmets and working on site. Thank you very much for coming today. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.